everybody. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Pappus's centroid theorem, which allows us to easily find the volume and surface area of arbitrary objects that we rotate around a line. So here we have a unit circle that is tangent to, let's just say, the x-axis. And we want to uh, rotate it around the x-axis. So we rotate it. We'll have another sort of circle here. Uh, what we'll end up getting is sort of like a torus shape. Um, so, like, like a torus is a donut, but instead, it'll it won't have a hole. It'll just be um, sort. It'll be tangent to itself. And so, we want to find the volume and surface area of that new rotated of that new figure, basically. And so Pappus' centroid theorem basically tells us to look at the centroid. Well, well, first we'll calculate the volume, and first we'll calculate the surface area. So for volume, uh, we take the, the area of the shape we're rotating times the distance that the, um, that the centroid of the sort of the figure, the figure's area almost, um, the centroid of the figure's area, the distance it travels over one full rotation. So, uh, so we have so we have this area right, and we know that it's the the area. So we have v is equal to the area of just a unit disk is pi r squared, but uh, since we have it's it's a unit, so we just have um, the area is pi. Now the centroid of the whole thing, assuming that there's a uniform density, the centroid is just going to be the center of the disk. Because um, thinking about it this way, if you had sort of a circular plate and you balanced it so that your so that your finger you just had one finger beneath the plate and it was on the center, it would balance out because you have equal mass in every single direction. So we want to know uh, the distance traveled by the centroid. Well, that's kind of obvious. Because um, it's going to rotate around uh, this the tangency point. Um, it's going to rotate around one full, one full rotation and with a fixed radius, and that radius is 1. Uh, so it's the distance is actually 2 times pi times 1 because the radius is 1. It's 2 pi r, but r is 1, so we just get uh, 2 pi squared is the volume. And so for the surface area, it's very similar. Uh, we take the surface area of our, of our object, so that's 2 pi. And we multiply by the distance that the centroid of the surface uh, travels. So in our case, the centroid of the surface and the centroid of the, I think it's called the lamina, they're, they're the same, right? But this is not always the case. If we have, let's say, a triangle, right? Then the centroid of the triangle might be somewhere right here, right? But the centroid of sort of the surface, right? Uh, let's say we're making a cone, so we're rotating it this way. The surface would be would be this part, right? And so the centroid would be sort of the middle of of the the hypotenuse. But here, since the surface is a closed loop, we can't really balance it out except by going in in the middle. So in our case, the centroids are the same. And so that means that, obviously, the distance here will be the same. So the surface area of our new figure is just 4 pi squared. All right, so now let's apply um, Pappas' centroid theorem to something uh, a little less problem-solving-y, but just for a, a simple cone, right? So let's say uh, let's say we have a, a right triangle. Let's call the base R and the the height H, right? 
So we know we, we can form a cone with radius r and height h by by rotating this this right triangle uh, around around its height. Uh, so we can use uh, Pops's centroid theorem to find out what the volume and what the surface area of our cone will be. So let's first figure out the volume. So we have the area times the distance that the centroid of the the area travels. So where would the centroid of the area be? Well, um, a little a little known thing is that that the centroid for a triangle is uh, if they have coordinates, right? Then the centroid will be at the average of those three coordinates, and so since we have two coordinates, and let's just say that this that the height coincides with the y-axis, and and or basically that that this point is the origin of our coordinate system, then we have two points with an x-coordinate of zero and one with a x-coordinate of r, which means that the centroid will be located somewhere somewhere around here, right? With a with an x-coordinate of r r over three. Right, because it's the average of 0, 0, and r, which is r over 3. So the distance that the centroid travels would be 2 pi times r over 3. So our volume of the, of the, of the cone, I hope I haven't been saying cube, the volume of the cone will be h r over 2, which is the area of this right triangle, times 2 pi times r over 3. And this part is the distance that the centroid travels over one revolution. So this just simplifies, and we get the standard volume of a cone, which is one third eight the height times the radius squared. Uh, I forgot a pi. Yeah, there we go. So now let's let's look at the surface area, right? And so we need to know what uh, what the centroid of our surface is, right? And so a cone, if you think about the surface area of a cone, let me try and draw a cone real quick. And uh, so we sort of have two parts of the surface area, right? We have this base, right? The base of the cone, which obviously is just a circle with radius r. Uh, and then we have this other surface area, which is like, actually, what if you, if you thought about like sort of grabbing uh, the, the cone with your hands, that would probably be what you grab, right? It's the sort of and it's what we call the lateral surface area. And so I'll actually compute the, what the lateral surface area is, and then we can add on uh, the second part, which is pi r squared. So, so already I'm just going to say we have a we have pi r squared here, um, and then I'll use Pappas's theorem to find out what what this lateral surface area is, right? So for the lateral surface area, we're rotating this. Uh, this hypotenuse of L, right? And obviously it's centroid, the centroid of just a, a line segment, assuming uniform sort of density, right? The, the, the centroid of a line segment is just its midpoint. Um, and, and so you can see that it's a distance of R over 2 away, right? Just by, just by similar triangles here, we have this, we create another right triangle here and you know, this is a midpoint, so it, it follows that this is half of this length. So the distance that it travels will be 2 pi r over 2, or just pi r. So, and, and yeah, so we're, so we're using Pappas' theorem to get the lateral surface area. So the, this little s will be the, I guess, the quote, surface area, which is just the length of this line, which I'm denoting as L, which you can find using Pythagorean theorem. I just don't want to write out the expression for L. Uh, usually the formulas just denote L. So L times the distance that it travels, which like we said is 2 pi r over 2. So here we're just adding a term of pi r L. And this is the surface area the total surface area of the cone. This this piece just right here is the what we call the lateral surface area. So this part that you would you would grab onto sort of. Uh, so anyway, that's it. Just want to show sort of a problem 
like a hard problem that to avoid integration, you know, and, and just and then another like a simple example that we would all know the, these formulas uh, and and how they how we can derive them just using Pappus's theorem because Pappus's theorem makes everything a lot easier. Uh, just just make sure that you are breaking things into cases, right? So anyway, thank you for watching and uh, see you in my next video.